Hi everyone, my name is Breeze and I currently work as a doctor in the NHS. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing about applying for an NHS job yourself or going via a recruitment agency. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. The NHS jobs website is just one of the ways you can actually find a job in the NHS. The other websites are the Health Jobs UK or Track website or the BMJ website. Now, most of the time, junior level posts are advertised in the NHS jobs website or the Track website. The NHS jobs website is not just for international graduates and it's not just for doctors. It basically will have any role that the NHS would need to fill. So you can find, you know, positions for nurses, physiotherapists, dietitians, what have you but it is a great website for you to actually go and sift through by region, by you know location, by speciality, for posts that you are interested in applying for. And when you go through the NHS Jobs website, you can set up an application. All of your relevant information for the posts that you would want to apply for. And then when you find those relevant posts, you can go ahead and just submit that one application that you've already done. You don't have to keep making a new application every time you apply. You can, of course, edit and modify each application if you think there are some extra things you'd like to mention based on the person's specifications or the job description of that particular post, but you would not have to make a new application every time. If you've not already, I would really recommend you check out our playlist on how to apply for jobs in the NHS. We talk about every little thing and we even walk you through the process of, an, of applying for a job on the NHS jobs website and what kind of job titles that you should be looking for and what in particular would help your application process be smoother. Now, what is a job agency or a recruitment agency? So they are recruiters, surprise, surprise, and they will try and get you a job in the NHS. Now, these individuals may or may not be from a medical background. These individuals may or may not understand the needs of an international graduate, and they may or may not be even based out of the United Kingdom. So with an agency, you need to really actually vet the entire agency itself and make sure they are telling you what they actually are and that they are a reputable agency because this is a big deal. You're putting a lot of information out there to an individual who would have a lot of important personal details of your life. So you shouldn't take it lightly if you decide to apply via an agency, especially since there have been a lot of incidences where international medical graduates have contacted us and said, well, I gave all of my information and then this situation happened or that situation happened because this agency actually wasn't as reputable as they came across. And there are numerous incidences that you can find all across social media where individuals put out their CVs or their resumes through these agencies and then they find out somebody's actually been selling them. So please be very careful before you proceed with a job agency for this particular reason. I don't want to make it sound like they're all horrible, but it is a thing because of course you're looking at a private company, somebody who of course isn't you who's going to be applying on your behalf and you need to make sure because there are scammers out there and you need to make sure you're not falling into a trap when you're speaking to an agency, especially because as soon as you join any sort of PLAB or UK related, GMC related, you know, type of, of Facebook group or anything like that, you will find that your inbox will become inundated with agencies saying, hey, we can get you a job. And even though they may sound all shiny and perfect, you really need to vet every email and everything that they send you to make sure they are who they say they are, especially because it is so easy in today's day and age to impersonate someone else. So if you are thinking about an agency, please make sure you go through someone that somebody else has already had an experience with to make sure you aren't being scammed. Because we personally have even gotten messages from agencies that we know once we start asking a couple of questions that they aren't actually who they say they are, despite the name they may be putting forward because of how they are answering certain questions. Like I, you can see here, this individual has told me, oh, they can get me a training job, which obviously they cannot do as a recruitment agency. 
Now you may be wondering, how exactly is this agency getting me a job? Well, agencies aren't just, you know, they don't blanket the entire United Kingdom and, and cover every single hospital. Most agencies will only work with some particular hospitals or just a certain area, and they will be actively trying to recruit for those hospitals for certain posts that maybe the hospitals are struggling to fill. Or, you know, the hospital may also have it on NHS jobs and are also, you know, letting the agency help them out and see what they can find. So when you are actually applying with an agency, you may find that they're, they're only going to be able to send the applications to a particular area because of those restrictions, because their agency is only working in one or two places, which is why some people use multiple job agencies when they are applying for a job so that they can cover as much ground as possible. Now you're going to ask yourself, well, wait a second, are they going to be charging me for all this? How are they making money? How are they staying in business? They are charging money, but they're not taking it from you. Depending on the agency, there may be a fixed or variable rate that they will put on to the hospital that is paid based on your starting salary. So it is to the agency's advantage if you are somebody with more experience applying for a higher level post because you would have a higher salary, then that percentage that they get off of your salary is something that they would take home as commission, if you would. And of course, then they would then be looking for individuals who are more specialized or more experienced because that means they take more home. Not only that, but a lot of job agencies are specifically asked to fill some of what are considered more hard to fill posts if they're especially niche specialities for consultant level posts or registrar posts. So they may also not have a lot of availability at a junior doctor level for that particular reason. And of course, a lot of agencies wouldn't necessarily want to dedicate that kind of time and effort towards filling junior doctor posts if it doesn't give them that much back um, in terms of their percentage for each individual that they actually do select for that job which is why it's really important that you read your contract if you go through an agency. We've had a lot of IMGs who've messaged us and told us, you know, this agency said that they got me a job here. I did get the job in that area and it wasn't what I expected at all. This wasn't the job that I thought I was gonna be getting. This wasn't the area that I thought I was gonna be living in. It doesn't have the amenities or the lifestyle that I was looking for and I want to go somewhere else. I want to break this contract and find a job in another area that I prefer to live in or work in. And they find out that because of the stipulations put into their contract, they actually cannot do that. Or if they choose to do that, they will be fined. And the reason for that is the hospitals put money into bringing you there. So if you leave, they don't wanna take that loss, obviously. So think about it this way. If you go to an agency and the agency's like, fine, we're gonna get you a job in hospital A in town B. And you go there and you're like, town B is nothing like what I thought it would be. And you know, you stay there for a little month, a month or two, you're like, let me try and get a feel of the place. And you're like, no, 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 I cannot live here. I cannot work here. I want to move to town C and work at hospital D. You may find that when you read your contract, they say, actually, you have to work with us for one year before you can do anything. One, that may happen. Or two, they'll say, if you want to break this contract before the stipulated time that you need to be working with us, here's the fine that you have to pay. So please make sure you are reading everything before you agree to anything. Now let's discuss the pros and cons of applying for a job by yourself via the NHS Jobs website. The first and most important thing is that you are in control of your application and you can apply as widely as you'd like. You can apply in Scotland, you can apply in Wales, you can apply in Northern Ireland and England itself, and nothing is limiting you to apply. The next thing is of course that you can see and choose by speciality where you'd like to apply and the title of the job that you would be interested in applying to. So that of course is also in your complete control. Thirdly, you're able to look at the person specifications and job description to actually understand, is this really the job that you want to apply for? Is this what you're looking for? And that way you would be able to apply appropriately. Of course, as I mentioned before, you would be making one job application and that application can be submitted to multiple posts. And you could of course tweak the application as necessary based on these um, on these person specifications and the job description so that you know exactly what you're getting into. And lastly, in my opinion, the most important thing is that you have a direct line of communication between you and the HR department and of course the trust recruitment. So if there's ever any part of this entire process, once you get shortlisted and your application proceeds, that you have any questions or concerns, they are there for you. You can contact them. Nobody will get mad if you email them. We have an article linked below where we talk about the steps and processes of what you should do and how you should proceed after you finalize your job. And it's really important that you ask those questions and you can ask all those questions yourself. You don't need somebody else to do it for you. If of course you're wondering what is right, what's not right, we always do suggest being a member of the BMA and they can always help you if you're concerned about your working hours, about your rota and about your salary.
Now, what are the cons? The biggest con for most people is that they have to actually apply for the job themselves. OMG. I know you can be busy. You don't want to do that. You don't want to spend the time sifting through different posts and seeing, hey, is this really what I want to do? Is this not really what I want to do? And I get that. So a lot of people don't like doing that. The second con is that you have to wait to hear back. Now, I put this as a con, but really it's not that big of a con because when you are looking at the job application, a lot of times if you look through it properly, they'll say, you know, the job application was going to close on this date and within this much time, we expect to contact you whether or not you've been shortlisted. It may seem, you know, two to six weeks or whatever. Whether or not that actually happens, it can depend because of course a hospital can receive a ton of applications. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that every hospital will contact you, even if they said they had. So you may feel like you've just kind of been left high and dry, that you sent an application, you don't know if you've been shortlisted, a couple of weeks have passed and they've not said anything to you. So it can be a little demoralizing if you get that on a first-hand basis, but really it's not a big deal. Um, it happens to everyone in any kind of job that you would apply for. They may reply, they may not reply, but at least you would know one way or the other because they will respond if you have been shortlisted. It's and honestly, just because you haven't heard back doesn't mean you won't eventually hear back. There are a lot of cases with IMGs who, who said, oh my gosh, I applied for this job like three, four months ago and now they're asking me for an interview. It could be, of course, that they had chosen someone else or they had interviewed somebody else and it didn't pan out or, you know, they're just backlogged and now they've gotten to your application and they want to interview you or more posts have become available and they want to interview you. So don't think just because you've not heard anything that it means the door's closed. It could just take a while for that door to actually open. <laughs> Now, what are the pros and cons of a recruitment agency to get you a job in the NHS? So the first pro that a lot of people are really on about is that they can help you if you have limited options in relation to your location when you're trying to find a job. So if you know you have to be in a particular city because of a family or something else, and you go ahead and you find yourself an agency that is, you know, latched onto hospitals in that area, there is the chance that they could help you because it is such a niche thing and it, there may be jobs available there that they can help you apply for. But of course, you have to always realize that with NHS jobs or with an agency, if you're only limiting yourself to a certain area or a certain number of hospitals, the competition for you will of course increase because you're limiting your options. You're not gonna be able to apply as widely as you'd like or you know as well as you'd like because you're only looking for what's available in those places. Another pro that a lot of people have said, like I mentioned as a con for applying by yourself is that the agency will apply for you. They will take your, your resume, your CV, and they will drop it off at all these places and say, hey, this person's looking for this job and here's, you know, here, here are their deets. Now, a limitation in my opinion about that is that with NHS jobs, when you're applying yourself, like I said before, you can modify your application accordingly to the specifications and the job description. But once you've given somebody your resume, that's it. That's all they're seeing when they're putting, you know, in front of the, the guys who are there. Now, of course, the recruitment agency may or may not talk you up a little bit and say, oh, this person's done this, this person's done that. You don't know it really. I guess it could be dependent on the recruitment agency itself. But at face value, what the hospital will be really looking at is a CV and a third party telling them this person is good for this job versus you and your NHS jobs application having your own voice and talking about what's up with you and why you're really great for this job. Now, as for the cons of an agency, bear with me, there are gonna be a lot of cons. Not that I'm personally against agencies on a whole, it's just these cons come from things that we have experienced, things that colleagues have told us about, things that international medical graduates unfortunately have faced and messaged us and said, I wish I knew this before I went with an agency. So of course, guys, all of this is based on people's experiences. You may have gone through an agency and had no problems whatsoever, but you should also know that these things can happen if you go through an agency. For me, again, like I said before, the biggest thing is you do not have direct communication with the HR or the trust recruitment. And for some of you, you might think, well, that's actually a pro. I personally do not think so because you don't know what a third party or somebody else is saying for you or on your behalf. And really, I don't like to be the, oh, well, he said, she said kind of a thing and, I, and just being a part of a chain of emails. If I have a question, I'd like to go to one person who knows the answer and get the answer. I don't like to do the whole, let me ask this person who's gonna ask that person who's gonna ask that person, then they're gonna get back to me through that whole ladder again. I think that's excessive and there's always a chance that there's gonna be some form of miscommunication. That's just something that can happen. So for me, 
the biggest con is you do not have direct communication. A lot of IMGs, unfortunately, are really scared about the chance, oh my god, what if I say this? What if they don't like me? Guys, it's fine. They will have had a thousand questions from a million people about things that they probably thought were silly questions initially as well, but you are well within your rights to directly communicate with them and say, actually, I'm a little concerned about this. I don't know about that. How do I do this? How do I do that? HR is there to help you with so much. Like, you know, you can ask HR, what is a good bank? What is a bank nearby the hospital? Where are accommodations? What areas should I look in? What should I do for this? How should I do that? As I said before, if you check on our post about finalizing your job in the NHS, and again, I want to emphasize the importance of having that direct line of communication. Another con is, as I said again, if the recruitment agency you are with is actually only attached to a couple of hospitals, your options are severely limited to the hospitals that they can apply into. That's why I said also that a lot of people go through multiple agencies because they want to try and, you know, widen their chances. So they will leave their resume with a couple of agencies and see who can get back to them. But like we had said before, with NHS jobs, you would basically have it at your fingertips wherever you want to apply. Go for it. Um, but you have to be very particular about agencies if and see how far can they actually apply and what areas can they actually apply into because if they are not affiliated or if that hospital that you particularly want to work at um, does not work with a particular agency, it doesn't matter if you leave your resume with them because they would not go and, and talk to that recruitment office. I already mentioned this con a little bit earlier about the contract. You need to know what you are signing. We have had a lot of IMGs who've come back to us and said this is not what I expected and you know, this isn't what I wanna do, this isn't where I wanna be, so I want to move somewhere else, but now my contract stipulates I can't do that and I'm stuck, what can I do? Really, there's not a lot that you can do because you're fixed to a contract and that contract also helps you with your visa process. So be very careful and very mindful if you go with an agency that you know what you're getting into. If you know, you know, particularly they told you what, what area you're gonna be living in, if you're happy to move to that area, what the contract says if you decide to leave jobs after six months. And it may not just be that you want to leave after six months because you don't like the area. Maybe you get into a training post or maybe you have to move for some other reason, family or some other sort of commitment. Can you easily break your contract? With NHS jobs, if you're applying yourself, there's already a stipulation in there that says under which period of time you have to give notice. It might say that you know you have to provide notice within two months that you'll be leaving this job and you can go ahead and do that. So it's very important, depending on the agency, they may or may not even discuss the contract with you. They may just say, actually, we bought you this contract, go ahead and sign it. And you, and trusting them, will go ahead and sign it without actually making sure everything's fine. Again, this is where the BMA comes in. Please get your contracts checked and get your rota checked. See that you're actually getting the right basic pay for your stipulated post. Another con is, guys, if you've already, let's say, tried through NHS jobs yourself and you've applied to several hospitals and you're like, this isn't working for me, I want to use an agency. The agency cannot then just apply for the same places that you've applied for. You will see that if you ask an agency, hey, can you help me out? They'll be like, have you applied by NHS jobs before? If yes, where? The reason they ask this is if you've already applied, they can't do some sort of magic and you can't just, you know, skip a line and apply again. You've already applied. It's done and dusted. They cannot help you any further there. Now, again, I, I know I mentioned this before, but again, another con is while agencies themselves don't charge you a fee, depending on the agency, they can charge a fixed to variable rate on your first year's salary as a finder's fee to the hospital to say, hey, look, we got you this person. You got yourself a doctor working in this hospital. Now pay us a commission for doing that. This can be tricky then, like I said again before, to a lot of IMGs because it may be stipulated in your contract, actually because we had to go out of our way to find you for this job, you can't just come and go as you would want. There are some things that you need to you know, do before we will let you leave. Maybe you have to work for a particular period of time. Maybe you have to rotate with them. Maybe you actually can't leave at all until the stipulation ends. Or if you do want to break the stipulation early, you would have to pay a fine. And then another con is that well, depending on your experience, you may find that an agency will tell you, well, they can't find you a job at all. And actually, you may not find a job at all in the NHS because you are too under-experienced. And this has been seen many times in these screenshots, if you'll check here, guys, where we've had conversations with a lot of IMGs who said they have been told by agencies that they will not find a job because they only have internship experience or, or they only have one part of a professional postgraduate exam done. And actually, they're not really experienced enough and the NHS doesn't have jobs for them. This is not true. 
The reason a lot of agencies may tell you this is, of course, that same finder's fee that we mentioned before. It's based on a percentage off of your starting salary. So, of course, somebody who has more experience, who's more specialized, will have a higher salary. And because of that, they will be looking for those individuals to be recruited by them. Now, I'm not maligning all agencies. I'm not saying everyone does this, but these are things that have occurred to IMGs before, as you can see in the testaments here. Or, of course, if you just ask any of your colleagues, I'm sure somebody will have told you that an agency at some point said to them, actually, uh, yeah, we're not looking for any junior doctors in the NHS. We need somebody who's a registrar or above. And that is not correct. You can always at any time check on the NHS job website and using their correct job titles, you will find there are so many jobs available at a junior doctor level. Y'all, I know I've gone through a lot of cons and you may be like, why would anyone want to go through a job agency? But again, at your discretion. Provided a lot of safety netting about what you should be looking out for. So proceed with caution because you need to know what you're getting into before you sign anything. Now here's the big question. Would we, me, Breeze, Ibrahim, Rhodes UK, recommend an agency? And the answer is, I think you probably know what the answer is at this point, we would not recommend an agency, guys, because really you can do this all yourself. It's all there. A lot of times, you know, we've had agencies message us telling us, ooh, you're not gonna be able to know how to figure out how to apply for that visa. Ooh, you won't know how to, you know, move into a new place by yourself. You won't be able to understand how to go to a bank. You won't be able to understand how to do this. Guys, you can understand anything. You went through med school. Y'all have understood enough. <laughs> And for anyone to tell you that is honestly really disrespectful, in my opinion, for them to think that or really undermine your intelligence and say you would not be able to know how to do certain things. Yes, you are moving to a foreign country. Yes, you're moving to a place that you've never lived in before, but that doesn't mean you suddenly don't know how to do things that you pretty much would be doing in your own country anyway. And of course, guys, there's so much free guidance about how to do all these things if you're really confused. Forget us for a second. If you're like, no, 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 Rhodes UK, you guys are great. You're fantastic. But I don't want to ask you. I want to ask an official source. By all means, speak to your HR department. Speak to your trust recruitment. That's what they're there for. That's what they're getting paid for. They can tell you. Actually, yeah, in this area, these are, these are where people usually rent out houses. We have hospital accommodation. You can do this. We've got that. Here's how you do all of these things. There is a process within the recruitment, within the hospital, to make sure you're well settled. That's what they're there for. There's a medical HR. There's going to be a recruitment part of the hospital that says, actually, guys, we're bringing this person in. We need to make sure all of these, you know, boxes are ticked. Have they done this? Have we got this from them? Have we got that from them? So don't think that just because you've done it yourself that you're going to limit yourself to not being able to, to progress and move forward. And also, an agency, like I said before, you have to really know what you're doing when you're applying. There's a lot of work that can go into that. Know who you're working with and make sure you are happy with how you proceed. Because ultimately, guys, it's your job, it's your future, it's your career. Do not shy away if you're, you know, if you're working with an agency to actually ask them every single question under the sun and make sure that you are totally happy with how they're proceeding. Because like I said, at the end of the day, it's your registration, it's your life. Now, you guys might be asking, does Road to UK work with any sort of agency? Are Abriz and Ibrahim getting any sort of kickback from an agency? No, we do not work with any agency. We will never work with any job agency, or recruitment agency, or whatever. We've got that heavily mentioned everywhere and every corner of our website. If anyone out there is telling you that they work with us, they're lying to you. And we are one of those people who heavily encourage individuals to be independent and do things themselves. If you are in any of our Facebook groups, you will see one of the things that we make sure do not happen is we do not allow recruitment agencies to come into our groups for that particular reason, because they have deceived people in the past. There have been people who've sent, been sent messages and gotten really confusing or you know, untrue information from these agencies, whether they are real agencies or fraud agencies, we cannot say who are telling them, if you give us this, if you give us that, we can get you all these things. And that's just not something that needs to happen. If you want to know your process of how you can come and work in the NHS or be a doctor in the UK, the information is out there. It's freely available. You can do this entire process yourself. There is no need, in our opinion, to unnecessarily complicate it by bringing in a third party. Again, if you want to, by all means, go for it. We would not recommend it. And we do not work with an agency and we will never work with a job agency. So let's just go over some frequently asked questions or things that people have messaged us about agencies or about this entire process that we think it's really important that we air out. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, somebody messaged me and said that they've been told that the NHS is saturated. And I was like, ooh, 
who told you that? And they were like a recruitment agency. A recruitment agency said the NHS is saturated, but if they apply through them, they can get them a job. How? If somebody is telling you that something is completely full and, you know, they can't get you in, in because there are no spots left, where is this recruitment agency magically finding you a spot? First of all, guys, let's debunk a lot of things. The NHS is not saturated. There are so many jobs on the NHS jobs website. If at any time you're wondering, are there jobs? Go to the NHS jobs website. It's free to use. You just go, you type in the type of job titles that you're looking for, and you will see how many jobs there are. All right. Now there may be more jobs at one particular time of the year than others, mainly because of how the way training, you know, training posts are scheduled, but there are jobs. All right. We're not making any money telling you there are jobs. We've already made that very clear, but yes, there are jobs. Secondly, a recruitment agency cannot just magically find you something that doesn't exist. Let's be really straight about that. If somebody tells you that they can do something that doesn't sound possible or sounds really unlikely, it's probably because it's not really likely. So be careful if somebody tells you something that sounds too good to be true, because it probably is. Another question we got was, well, if I apply through an agency, can they get me a job faster than if I applied by myself by NHS jobs? Yes and no. Let me explain that. So like we had mentioned already, if an agency is affiliated with a particular hospital and that hospital decides, well, I'm not going to put this job out to NHS jobs. I'll just let the agency try and find me something because it might be that that job is not something that need, they need immediately filled or whatever their quota is about how they're applying. In that situation, if you've applied through an agency and that agency sees, ooh, this, pot, this is available for this individual who has this resume, then yes, you would get that job. But if you look at it in another way, so we've got Dr. A and we've got Dr. B. Dr. A is applying by himself via NHS jobs and Dr. B is applying by herself via an agency. In this situation, if they are both applying for the same post, okay? If they're both applying for the same post, it does not matter if they have applied via an agency or if they have applied via, you know, and it's just jobs by themselves because they're going to be judged on their merit and what they put forth in their application. If one person is better qualified than the other person, that's who gets the job or that's who gets shortlisted for the interview or proceeds onwards. It doesn't matter in the method that you've applied because at the end of the day, you've applied for the same post just through different processes. So this next question actually is something that's happened to me. I had a job agency message me and say, you know, are you really happy in the job that you're doing right now? So I'm, I'm in training, I'm a trainee. And I was just like, Ooh, this is a funny question. And this is something that's publicly available on, on my Facebook page. So I, I asked them, do you think you can get me a better job than what I've actually got? And they were like, Oh yes, most definitely. We can get you a better job than what you're actually doing. And I said, well, I'm in a training post right now. Can you get me another training post? And they said, yes, we can get you another training post. Guys, all the alarm bells are ringing at this point. They cannot get you. I don't care what any recruitment agency tells you. No one, no third party can apply for a training post for you. This is a process that you will have to do by yourself via Oriole, which they will not have access to. This is not you just dropping off a CV somewhere and someone saying, Ooh, Hey, you're great. We'll get you into training. No, the training process, which we've talked about extensively in this video is a much more complicated process than applying for a non-training job. You have to make an account in Oriole. You will then upload all your information and through the application process, talk about yourself and submit whatever evidence they require. And then you will have a long listing, a short listing, a whole interview process. This is not something a recruitment agency can help you with in any which way. Do not believe any agency who tells you they can get you a training job because it's a bald faced lie. We've also had some individuals tell us, well, the recruitment agency told me they can get me over RLMT and that's fantastic, right? Right. I should go with the agency because they can move past RLMT. Now, what is RLMT? RLMT is the resident labor market test and it doesn't even exist anymore, guys. It doesn't exist. It's gone. It's been gone almost like for two years now. What it used to mean was before they put out a job application, before they said, Ooh, who should we shortlist? They would give preference to UK and EU EEA residents. So people who held those passports, they would get preference because they want to recruit at home first. And then if that was that quota wasn't filled, they would look at international applicants. See, but the thing is guys, since it doesn't exist anymore, it doesn't make a difference. Um, now I'm not going to argue whether or not an agency could potentially get you a job faster if there was an RLMT because that scenario does not exist. If that scenario does exist in the future, could they do something more? I'm not here to say that, 
But right now, if somebody is telling you as the making of this video, RLMT does not exist, it's been gone, like I said, for like two years now. So if anyone's telling you that they can help you skip some line when it comes to RLMT, you should ask them, do they even know if RLMT exists? Now, the biggest concern that plagues IMGs is once they are, go ahead and they finalize their job, they're really worried. Well, who do I ask all these questions about? I have questions about my working hours. I have questions about my rota. I've got a lot of experience that I would like to have, you know, put into my salary. Guys, you can you can do this all yourself. Um, I know there are agencies out there who scare people and say, "Ooh, you can't do any of that by yourself at all. Uh, uh, we can help you. Fine. If you want to go with an agency and, and let them do it for you, that's fine. You can have a third party do it. Or you can do it yourself because first of all, you have the right to do that. You know your experience and your expectations and you can talk to them very frankly at the end of the interview if you felt like it went really well. Actually, I have this experience, I have that experience. I would like to consider perhaps a better salary than what you've mentioned given what I'm bringing to this job. And that's completely in your right. You can also, of course, like we've mentioned before, run your contract and your rota through BMA if you're concerned that something may not be right. But the HR is not like some sort of scary group of people that you can't send an email to that, ooh, they may rescind my job offer. Just be polite, send out an email and be like, hi there, my name is so-and-so. I'm looking to start in a couple of months in you know this department, in this hospital. I'm just wondering about these things. How does this work? What does an on-call rota look like? Can I maybe get a period of shadowing for a little bit to, to really you know settle into this role before I start taking on these extra duties? Who should I look to? Who's my rota coordinator? You know, what should I expect? That's what they're there for. By all means, use them. All right, I just kind of want to wrap it up a little bit by talking about my experience of using NHS jobs. So I was approached by a ton of recruitment agencies, as is probably abundantly clear by now. I did not use the single recruitment agency. I applied by NHS jobs by myself. And let me tell you how I did that and how my experience went. When I passed PLAB 2 and I sent off all my deets for GMC registration, I thought, let me go ahead and make an NHS jobs profile and start applying right now because there's nothing stopping me. There is a mention on the profile, of course, that you are in the process of GMC registration or awaiting GMC registration. So I clicked that option and I went ahead with making my profile. If you check this video here, we actually walk you through the process and talk about things that you can add to your profile to make it look really awesome. So I would suggest you look through it. But basically I went ahead and did that and I actually got a couple of job interviews before my GMC registration was even finalized. And I like make it really clear guys, all I had was internship experience. I've not done anything else. I've not done any publications, research, audits, QIPs or anything like that. If you want to do those things, by all means do them, but do not feel that it is, you know, super duper necessary. So I applied um, to a variety of posts, different job titles, and the job interview that I ended up taking actually was for a non-training CT1 level or equivalent job. I know a lot of people get confused about this. Well, what about FY2? But really guys, you've already done your equivalent of FY1 and you can, you can look at the different types of job titles which we talked about in this video and see what is most appropriate for you because I read the job description, I read the person's specification and I felt that I met that criteria. And to be honest, my interview went really well and I was happy with the job. At the end of the interview, I asked the consultant a couple of questions about the hospital. I, there was a representative from HR there. I asked them a couple of questions about what I was looking forward to. In this entire process, until I got the certificate of sponsorship and applied for my tier two visa, I was in regular contact with them about how do I do this? How do I do that? What do I need? And there was no issue at all. Once I started, when I came to the hospital, my first few couple of days, I met with the HR team. They gave me a tour of the hospital. They showed me where this was. They showed me where that was. They helped me open a bank account. They showed me where payroll is. They explained any questions that I had about it. So what I'm trying to say is guys, you know, there's a lot of fear about will you, will you get the help that you need? And the help is there. There are people who are doing this. So just you just need to know who to ask and how to ask them. You don't need to be afraid if you're doing it by yourself. And of course, we're always there. If you're concerned about anything, you could always drop us a line. But I can guarantee you, we have written about it somewhere or we've got a video about it somewhere because we know how stressful this entire process is for international graduates. I just want to wrap this all up guys to say, you know, if you want to apply via an agency, go ahead. It's just, we wanted this video to be out there so everyone knows both sides of the coin. They know, you know, the pros and cons of applying by yourself and the pros and cons of going through an agency. I just want to end all of this by saying, if you're being constantly messaged you know, being chased all the time by an agency saying, hey, come to us, apply through us, do this, do that. At the end of the day, who is actually looking to benefit? Is it them or is it you? 
And that's all I've got to say about that. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you've not already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we'll see y'all soon. Bye.